seems that Disney has done it again. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a time when Disney was a formidable creative force, but that was only in animation, and they were never really good with their live action efforts. I mean, there were a few that were good, but that's the problem. There were a few live action efforts that Disney actually put some creative effort on, and, well, they never did it again. So, Disney had this idea to remake their animated beloved classics into live action. So, they started with, well, 101 Dalmatians, but they officially started in Alice in Wonderland back in 2010, and it made a lot of money. Even though it wasn't that very good, but Disney didn't care, so they made more remakes, and they were nothing but bad idea after bad idea after bad idea. And there's more to come. And it seems that Disney has been in a creative nosedive as of late. And it's just sad to hear. But enough about that. We're here to talk about live action remakes. One of which has been released. One of which came from a really beloved classic. I'll add it. So, let's get into it. First of all, the story, well, it starts off pretty standard with the genie singing about Arabian Nights. Singing Arabian Nights. And then we come to Jafar, who wants to get the lamp from the Cave of Wonder. Then we go to Aladdin, who are introduced as a professional thief with a heart of gold. That's all we get. We were introduced to Jasmine, in disguise, in the market, who feels pity for a bunch of children, and then, until the guards come after her, not knowing if the princess, and then Aladdin helps her out uh, in the one jump sequence. And I gotta tell you, it's kind of dull and lifeless. Well, a lot of the musical numbers are, and it's a bit sad to see such a wonderful and energetic song translate and visually into just a simple chase scene. No offense, but... And I don't... I, it's quite frustrating to see. Then we're introduced to, officially, to Jafar, who, from the looks of it, was grown, grew up in the streets just like Aladdin. And he's a thief, just like Aladdin. So, he gets Aladdin to get the lamp from the Cave of Wonders, where he meets the genie, Will Smith. And, honestly, he's, uh, Will Smith isn't that bad. He's not trying to emulate Robin Williams. He's trying to, he's doing his own thing. And that's fine by me. And, friend like me, is uh, not that bad, but it's... Has really compared to the animated one. So, and for some reason, the Sultan seems a bit boring in this one, whereas in the animated one, he's quite, you know, fun and quite a quite, kind of a bumbling idiot, being controlled by Jafar. And for the side characters, such as <clears throat> the Magic Carpet, Iago, and Abu, they're quite. I don't know, forgettable. I mean, <clears throat> in the animated one, Iago fully talked, but in this one, he's just a normal parrot that can understand human language and can talk properly. And Abu is... kind of looks weird. And the magic carpet doesn't really... isn't that charming. I must honestly. But, hey, it's CGI. What are we gonna do? And for some reason, <clears throat> the... the... For, for me, the love story between Aladdin and Jasmine seemed a bit forced, in a way. I mean, it's probably just me, but it doesn't seem very natural, since all of their moments together were quick, and, and, just, and just for the sake of, uh, you know, be, being a remake, that it's just there just because it was in the original and not because it's necessary for them to build their relationship into something great. And, uh, well, the third act, where Jafar takes over, is, well, uh, disappointing. Because 
Al Jafar doesn't. All Jafar did was become Sultan, and then everyone around him just willingly followed. And the, until Jasmine sings a very, I must say, awful song, the title Speechless. And, well, it's just. But don't get me wrong, Jasmine in this one is quite, quite better than the original. For she wants to be Sultan instead of. What Jasmine wants. Kind of noisy outside. Damn. And. Well, there's so many complaints I have. Oh. But hey, Will Smith was kind of good. He's his own genie, and I respect that. And for his Prince Ali, one, it's also bland and dull. Because. He doesn't really have that much energy. Whereas in the animated one, Genie was always teleporting somewhere in different disguises, singing and <coughs> singing about Prince Ali. Sorry. And this one, he just stays there on the on on the float, I guess, and uh, it just doesn't it just doesn't seem fun enough. Now, admittedly, there were some funny moments in this thing, but, well, has, well, where the animated one has the added opportunity, added gift of Robin Williams, so he is the source of all the comedy, but in this one, there are a lot of sources for comedy in this one, and that's one I respect. And that's all anything good I have to say about that. Overall, the story is standard. And it doesn't really, and all the new additions are just there, and they don't really change anything on the overall story. So there's that. The acting, well, the acting, that's quite fine. They got a pretty decent Aladdin, even though his uh, performance is a bit boring. And uh, Naomi Scott isn't that bad. She, I mean, Here's the thing, she's the only one with a decent voice, or has, whereas the genie and Aladdin, well, they're, meh, their singing was okay. Jafar was pretty decent, we had a, he has a backstory, whereas in the, other, in the animated one, he's just a bad guy, where this one, he's a, he's just like Aladdin. There's that, I guess. The technical aspects were fine. Uh, the CGI for Genie could have been better, I'll be honest. And, uh, well, the costumes and sets were vibrant and colorful. And Jasmine's wardrobe is like Princess Amidala's from Star Wars. It's always changing. And that's okay for me. Now, the, th the themes in this are all about, um, uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> in the animated one, the theme was, there were a lot of themes in it, like entrapment and, and uh, you know, lifestyles and choosing your own destiny, where in this one, I don't really know. I think they tried to emulate that from the animated one, but... It, I really don't know. I think it's the same. Probably, I don't know. It is. There's there's a message in there. I just don't know. Uh, can't think of anything. It's probably, um, you know, wish fulfillment and you know, being content with who you are, probably. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, the, but, you know, there's... I don't know. <laughs> Overall, the live-action remake of Aladdin it was Dan Motorcycles outside. Damn it. Overall, the live-action Aladdin has its own strengths and its own identity. But ultimately, it 
pales in comparison to the original, like as all live action remakes Disney make. And that's all I gotta say. It has that flair, it has that style, but all in all, it's just copying. All in all, the movie just copies what, what was done before. And it's just a retread of what we've seen. It's like, um, it's like finding out the trick to a magic trick and then watching it again. You, it's not the same. It's, I'll be, okay, I'll just say this. I didn't, it was enjoyable, but it's not that good. It's the same feeling I had with The Greatest Showman. It, it has that energy somewhat, but it, overall, it, it doesn't really seem to be trying hard. It doesn't try to do any anything that puts us in a different perspective. I mean, it, it obviously just it's just for a way for us to escapism and enjoy it. But it's I just I just didn't enjoy it. You know what I mean. You get what I'm trying to say. So I give it a five out of ten. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I really don't know what else to say. And that's my review, apparently. It doesn't matter if I didn't enjoy it, as long as there are people out there who do like it, and there's others who don't, it's all, it's all on you. It's all on you. I mean, it's a nostalgia trip, and there's nothing wrong with that. You do you, and I'll just do me. Okay? My name is VR and this was a film review of Aladdin, live action remake.